Hey guys, I wanted to share the backyard vineyard project that I've been working on. Um, it's a five row vineyard by about 65 foot rows. I've got some Cab Franc planted, Merlot planted, uh, Lemberger, which is also known as Blau Francish, uh, Riesling and Traminette, and then just a couple test vines of uh, like hybrids and I'll have a couple Cab Sauv tests. Uh, I'm in the south, southwest Pennsylvania so the climate's a little bit unknown for what's going to happen. I'm basically halfway between the Finger Lakes and uh, Virginia. So a lot of these are kind of tests and we'll kind of just figure out how things go. Um, I've got a data logger here. This is from Onset and what this will do is uh, measure temperature and humidity. It pings once every 10 minutes and it'll track it throughout the year. So I'll get basically a graph and kind of get a better feel on my microclimate. Um, I've also got a, a, another data logger that measures light intensity. So the light intensity one's the MX2202, uh, and then the temp and humidity is the MX2302. And those I can just Bluetooth to my phone, so they're really pretty simple to use. And like I said, I'll just get a better handle on the microclimate. Um, the trellis type that I chose to do is called Smart Dyson. So it's a split canopy style, kind of allows you to spread out the vigor of the vines. Um, I've basically got a cordon wire here, uh, two catch wires, two catch wires, and two catch wires. So it'll allow me to run the trunk up, split, and then um, run canes upwards as well as running canes downwards, which is generally a good um, technique in areas that you have relatively fertile soil. Um, as far as soil goes, the, probably the most important factor would be drainage. So um, in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of clay. This is like a, about 12 inches of topsoil followed by like a sandier clay and then kind of a shale type soil. Um, so it's nice here because on this part of the lawn, it's just not flat. It kind of is like a concave surface so the water just flows off it. It never really gets muddy here. It drains really pretty good. Um, so it's not the worst soil. It's a decent soil for the vineyard I think. Um, I, like I said I think the biggest issue I'll have is just excessive vigor in the vine. So that's why I've got the split canopy style. Um, for posts I used, um, for end posts I used these, um, I think these are five to six inch treated posts. I got these up in Erie, PA at um, Northeast Fruit Growers. I've got the upright posts, which are three to four inch treated. And um, normally people would run an anchor wire here, but to conserve space and make sure I can get the mower around, I chose to do this angle brace. And um, this is another one of those three to four inch posts. It's pinned and then it's additionally pinned into um, a post that's driven in here. Um, around the end posts and also the uprights, I put a lot of crushed like heavy block and stone and just tamped it really really good just to solidify these posts so they're really um, rock solid because there's a lot of wires on this and the tension's not very high but when you have seven wires it's just it, you just have to have a really sturdy post. Um, the wires that I'm using, this is pretty standard. I'm using um, 12 and a half gauge or uh, 12 and a half gauge um, high tensile. So this would be like what you'd use on an electric fence, but it's also what you use in a vineyard. Um, I've got wire strainers on every single wire. So you can buy these by like the 25 pack and they're a few bucks a piece. Um, so then it just kind of allows you to you know, set the tension and if you need to tighten it, it's really easy. There's just a tool you put on and it clicks. So really pretty simple. Um, the row orientation is um, north and south, which is really good. It kind of optimizes the sunlight that these grapes will get. And it's in a pretty full sun area. So again, um, I really want to maximize the sunlight because I am growing um, some grapes that will be a little bit challenging to ripen um, in this climate. Uh, let's see. Oh, the, um, the spacing between rows, that's kind of important to think about. So I've got about six foot row to row spacing. 
and my posts are at, at the middle are about um, five and a half feet tall. So you almost want like a one to one ratio because you want to kind of, if you went really tall on your post but had not a lot of space in between, you just wouldn't really maximize the sunlight that's going to come down on the vines. So that's something to keep in mind, roughly a one to one. Um, for vine spacing, I've got five feet on the um, vinifera, which would be like your Cab Franc, your Merlot, um, your Riesling. And I'm also doing, I think that'll be fine for those vines. I've got a, a couple test vines that are hybrids in the back that I'm doing eight foot spacing. And the Traminette here, I'm on a five foot spacing, which is, I'm a little nervous that that's a little bit aggressive, especially seeing how well the Traminettes are growing. So um, I think for the hybrids, something like, um, I don't know, seven or eight foot spacing with a split canopy, because VSP, vertical shoot positioning, on those is just, they're just gonna be way too aggressive of growers to do something like that, unless you're really sprawling them out over, you know, 10 or 12 feet. So um, that's pretty basic. I used these grow tubes to get the season started because in my area I was a little bit nervous about deer chomping the young vines off which will basically you know end them uh, and it also creates kind of a humid environment to get them to grow pretty nicely I've got uh, as far as like pests that I've had to deal with <clears throat> of course deer are one uh, Japanese beetles have been a little bit of an issue but only for about one week of the year and then um, downy mildew. So like in California, they'll get a lot of powdery mildew. In this climate, especially in September, we get a lot of nights where the humidity spikes to about 100 degree, or 100 percent, which I'll see on the uh, data logger. And what that ends up doing is creating um, a lot of uh, downy mildew. And you can tell when you have downy mildew, you get little spots on the tops of the leaves. And if you flip the leaf upside down, you'll see um, like a white powder. And you really kind of have to spray something. Uh, you can spray copper. And like what they'll do in Bordeaux is they'll do a copper lime blend, uh, which is pretty eco-friendly compared to some other options. Um, but you really want to spray before the mold really gets out of hand because, or before the mildew gets out of hand because it's just, um, it's a lot easier to control if you catch it early. Um, I would say that's probably the, those are pretty much the key things you're going to want to think about when you're starting a backyard vineyard. Um, I'll put some follow-up articles on my website, smartwinemaking.com, so make sure you go check that out. And I'll also post a link to the data loggers that I'm using in my uh, description. So if you're thinking about doing a backyard vineyard, just uh, keep checking in or post any questions you have down in the comments and I can share some of the things I've uh, learned along the way. Thanks for watching.